I was not sure I was going to win this fight. How could you be sure? He's fucking Hoyler sure Gracie. I mean... He's Hoyler fucking Gracie. I never said that oh, I'm going to go out there and just strangle him. I was just... I didn't know... I hadn't competed in so long. Look right here. I'm faking like I'm going to wrestle. Because <laughs> I didn't think he was just going to let me pull him into a quarter guard. I thought, at this point, I'm like, wow. He just... He didn't I know. thought he was just going to try some totally different shit. But this is what he always does. Every morning before I work out... I warm up on the Stairmaster, I go to YouTube, put Hoyler, ADCC, pick one of his matches, and that's how I get, that gives me all the motivation. I just watch him roll, <laughs> and he's so good at this. But I thought he would try to pass to the other side. And I thought this position, I thought this position was going to be the hardest to get, and this was the key. If I could just get quarter guard in this position, I felt like I could get him. And there's a bunch of crazy rules in this match as well. One of the rules was that Hoyler was wearing like these skin tight shorts. Eddie was wearing gi pants. Um, and Hoyler was allowed to grab Eddie's gi pants, but Eddie wasn't allowed to grab Hoyler's shorts. So it was weird to watch, man, because there's times where he's like giving you a wedgie and pulling on your pants. And... Yeah, he's pulling them down. You can see my underwear. Yeah. And when, <laughs> and when he got to that uh, leg lock and he's trying to defend that leg lock, I mean, you're tearing his knee apart and he's hanging on to your, your cuff. It saved him. The pants saved him. Yeah. Because if he didn't have the pants, I would have stomped on that foot and got the extra power. Because he, oh, I mean, uh, man, his, I think his knee popped at least seven times. We were talking. Yeah. I'm like, we could stop this now. Are you sure? He goes, no, I'm fine. And I'm popping. I'm like, what about that? He goes, I'm <laughs> fine. I'm like, it just kept popping. I'm like, damn, are you sure? Because everything's good. I said, everything's fine. Like, we're talking throughout this whole match. Like, right here, he wanted the underhook really, really bad. So I was saying, it's hard to get this time, huh? Because the first time he got the under underhook, <laughs> right. I go, a lot of work. Yeah, I'm like, a lot of work, huh? It was a hard <laughs> one. It's only because I would rather go against a guy who wasn't really mad at me right if i could joke with you and get like I, like this is just for fun right right then right. i feel like okay i i can get this guy now because i could win because he's not mad but if he's <laughs> mad oh shit like i would never want to fight like a diego sanchez type guy who's mad at me i'm like oh no 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 i want to fight a guy that's like friendly and shit <laughs> <laughs> So, that's hilarious. Yeah, so that we were just, I was just constantly joking with him, constantly. And uh, during, like after I swept him, when I get on top in the electric chair, and I'm holding him, I go, you can't move from here, so just hang on and relax. I need about a minute to rest. And I'm just like, <laughs> I go, you can't do nothing, just relax. <laughs> that's hilarious. Because <laughs> there's oh. some positions where uh, they're – I don't know, maybe three or four positions are like cradles. They're like wrestling cradles. I mean, right. It, it happens here where the guy on the bottom just can't do anything. He's not getting tapped, but he can't move. He's completely wrapped up. And I use those spots to rest. So, uh, But it's uh, hilarious that you told him, just relax. You can't you know, get out of this. <laughs> when, when, when me and Jean-Jacques wrestle, we are always talking smack to each other. Me and Jean-Jacques always goof. and we're always, It's yeah. always a joke. It's always. Fun. Yeah. Always, me and John. It's like a thing we do, and I do it. There's certain guys that I roll with, and I do that too. I don't like to do it too much to my students because then it seems like I'm acting all arrogant against a guy that I. Could, right. He's one of my students. He's a blue belt or a white belt. Right. I'm not. That would look really douchey. No. But you seem, playful. But because Jean Jacques can smash me anytime he wants, I talk. Uh, like I pretend like I'm arrogant because it's funny because right, you can right, do right. anything you want. Right. So no matter how douchey I get, we know it's it just doesn't make any right. sense because he's killing me. But um, uh, so same thing here. I have so much respect for him that that I feel like I could just joke around with him and I don't want him to be mad at me. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's a good attitude to have, man. Especially after 11 years between the matches. Um, it's cool that you uh, you kept that feeling, and you were completely uh, completely respectful, rather, uh, the entire way up to it, the promotion of it, your your opinion of him. You know, you were you were like praising what a legend he is. And, always, I yeah. always. You were very self deprecating about yeah. your first victory too. Um, um, this was a twenty minute match, and because there was no submission, uh, it's a draw. Metamorphs is doing a unique thing, and they I don't know if they've got the rules totally ironed out where they want them to yet, but what they are, what they're trying to do is discourage people from point fighting. And what that means is work towards submission at all times, and you may get a submission and you may not get a submission, but the 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 idea is you're you're seeing real jujitsu here, and they've accomplished that. Like everyone was going for submissions, whether it was Guy Mendez or Hoffa Mendez or you know Keenan Cornelius, everyone was going for submissions. Um, sometimes they didn't get them, but 
it was really exciting because of that, because guys couldn't just sort of wrestle to a certain position and then hold. Um, but if this was a scored match, you would have beat him handily. I mean, you swept him multiple times. You got side control on him, and you had two near submissions. This is where he gets the underhook. This is, the crowd goes nuts because he was been fighting for the underhook for five minutes, mm -hmm. and he finally gets it. And this is the position that we were in in our first match. So all the graces are like, "Yes, he got the underhook." It's so technical that right. he fi he finally got it. And I still have him in quarter guard here, so I was a little worried. But you see what I'm doing with my right hand? I'm going under the knee right here. I never mm -hmm. really do that. And I, I was keeping him from going no-hand pass. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. This is nice. He can't go no-hand pass because I'm holding his leg out like that. Uh -huh. And I've never really done that before. This is the first time. It's crazy. Oh, see how I have my left hand? Yeah. He can't go no-hand pass. I'm holding op open his legs. So uh -huh. I felt comfortable even though I didn't have the underhook. I just had to somehow get a lockdown. So for my people, they know. They see me fighting like this all oh, this is every day in the gym this is how it looks i start in this position this is how it looks so to the gracie side they probably thought he was uh winning right here like exactly. my mom was freaking out my mom thought he was killing well, me this at this moment you got the lockdown <clears throat> somewhere in here you got the lockdown and when you got the lockdown here it is there it the is. crowd was... went fucking crazy yes that was crazy yeah. i get the lockdown my guys go nuts yeah he gets the underhook his crowd goes nuts yeah. i get the lockdown my crowd goes nuts that was it was crazy the lockdown's way bigger though the, the what what for folks who don't know the lockdown when you got a guy who's really good at it and he has you in half guard and slaps it on your legs in jeopardy you might tear your fucking knee you're getting manipulated you got two legs against one and when a guy's really good at it a guy like eddie when they're really good at it and they have two legs against one it puts you in a, a precarious position and it's it makes you vulnerable to a lot of different sweeps and here you're there flipping them backwards like that's look, when dude, the crowd went nuts well dude you're you're you got his leg in a mangled position here his electric chair right yeah. here i didn't think this was the plan the plan was exactly what happened that was the plan. I was going to go just do what I do at the gym every night. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what I do every night. This is nothing new. It wasn't a special strategy for Hoyler. So that was John Jock's whole plan is to get me to do what I normally do, the best shit I'm, I'm at, uh, to, to do it out there on him. And then he reversed you for a I, second. <clears throat> that was you only got to back get on the top I again. didn't have the leg on my shoulder. So mm -hmm. I go, let's go back and boom and get it. So it looked like he swept me, but I went back to put that leg back on my shoulder and I went rock right back up. Uh. So people thought he's I'm like, <laughs> dude, I do it all the time. You know, so now I'm in a position. This is oh, where so I'm, you rocked it with momentum because you had full control over that yeah. leg. It was just wasn't on my shoulder. I had to go back and scoop it up. So now I'm on top, and now I'm in, I'm in the electric chair on top, and this is where I'm talking to him. I'm like, you can't do anything here. Just relax. This is where I rest. I went through a lot of explosion, and I rest right here. I have control of his And look at this. That's why he was doing that thing with his hands, because people were wondering, like, why is he throwing his hands up in the air? Like, you know, like he yeah. did that a couple of times when you got him into side control. Yeah, and He did that. And then I passed the guard. Boom. And right here, I'm, I'm still – he's still stuck. I got him in a cradle. But that makes sense now, because everybody wondered why he was doing that with his hands. People were like, oh, Hoyler was complaining. No, he's complaining because you were talking shit to him. Yeah. You were saying you're stuck here. And don't and, don't and may, move. And maybe he was saying, well, I can't do nothing. He's holding me. He's right, holding me. Right, like, right, right. Jiu Jitsu, we're holding, we're, squ we're, we're clinching and squeezing, right. you know, and he's all like, how could he complain about that? He's totally immobile here. Even yeah. though I pass, I pass, I let go of the lockdown and passed his guard, the reason why the pass was guaranteed is because of the control I have on his leg. I have a head and arm and the leg, so that pass was easy. As soon as I let go of the lockdown, didn't want to let it go until I rest a little bit. And then finally, I let go of the leg last, and now I'm in side control. And here's the big transition. I thought he was going to turn into me, but he turns away, so I'm like, oh, that's even easier, but he's rolling in a nice way. But I had to turn it into 100% here. So this is halfway. This is a, a neck crank that I do to get the guy to give me his back. So I'm neck cranking him here. And if he pulls his left arm all the way out, um, I usually transition to the back. And that's what he did right there. So now I'm getting up. And his left arm's free now. So all I got to do is get up on my right knee and then swirl to the back. That's what I'm going to do here. I wanted the twister. That was the plan. The plan plan was to get him in a twister, but he did a really good job of just shrugging me off. So now I got to start over again. So at this point, I'm thinking, this is what I'm really thinking. Um, I thought the most important thing is for me is to go out there and not get smoked and not get tapped in 20 seconds or 30 seconds because that would be 
that would crush me. That would be the worst possible thing. So let's make sure that doesn't happen. And if I lose, if I tap, at least let me go out there and give, we have 20 minutes, let's see some good 10 planet techniques for my people just to show that it works. If he taps, so at this point, I'm thinking I did so much to him right there, textbook 10 planet shit all the way through, note for note, that I thought, if he, the worst case scenario, if he taps me in one second, at least I got some good shit in. So in my <laughs> mind, in my mind, because that's how much respect I have for him. Right, right. I'm right. like, he could still get me. I'm not over. We got right. like 13 minutes. So in my mind, I already won. I go, I won. So when you think that way and you're, I thought, I, I, I already did all this shit. So the worst case scenario, he taps me out. I did a good job. So for some reason, that made me just want to attack him more and go, let's just keep putting, let's just keep pounding up. Oh, here's another one. Damn, let's see if I could do another one. Oh, here's another one. And I just changed shit. I go, damn, I'm not going to go for a twister. I'm going to go for a vaporizer. So when I, when I get him in an electric chair and he doesn't tap, when I test his flexibility, if they don't tap, I can just sweep them and get on top and set them up for a twister, which I already tried. But I made the decision. I go, you know what? There's a lot... He's pretty good at shaking me off the back. If I just go to the vaporizer, it'll look just as cool as the twister. And I do it all the time. And that's good enough. So that was the plan. I go, he's not stopping the electric chair. So I'm going to go back and get another. another. I thought about rubber guard for a second there. And I thought, you know what? You see how I got the underhook? Uh -huh. You see that? I went rubber guard, locked down, whipped him. He had the underhook. But that whip, boom, I sucked him around. Bam. That's a little whip down combo. A very important combo to master. And now I got the under, so I thought, he's not stopping the electric chair tonight because if he would have been able to, he can't, or I, I, I'm able to do electric chairs easy, so I knew I could just go back and more money in the bank. I knew he couldn't stop it. He just was perplexed here. So I go, you know what? I'm, I got to go to the vaporizer here, I, that, which means I got to get his leg t over to my left shoulder on the other side. I need to get my head. I, want, I just need to squash his leg down and, and get on top in a... Uh, leg drag type position, but a leg drag with a lockdown to maintain control. So right now I go back to the electric chair for the third or fourth time, and I was really confident at this point. I just knew he wasn't going to tap from the electric chair, and I didn't want to pass his guard to get on top and try the twister. I already made the decision. So I for folks who don't know what we're talking about here, the electric chair is a move where you got a guy literally in a full split, and he, you're controlling his bottom leg and the other leg. You're you're forcing it up towards his head. Most people don't have the flexibility to tolerate it, <clears throat> and a lot of times they tap just from that. You're like literally ripping their crotch apart. Yeah, and and right here, you know what? I didn't get I didn't get the position I wanted, so I'm letting him get on top so I can set it up again. I go, he cannot stop it. He can't stop my underhooks. I already knew I had him beat on the inside, so I'm gonna I'm gonna set it up again and go back to the because I wanted the vaporizer. He foiled the vaporizer. I lost control of his leg, so I got to start over again. So all of these times where he's on top, where the audience is like, oh, the tide has shifted back and forth. This is just you resetting, dude. He could not stop my half guard game. I was just the confidence just kept growing and growing. So even though he has the underhook, I go watch. I'm gonna get the underhook back. Like, I was already getting it back. There's no way you could stop it. it like that. See that? Boom, whip down. I go, yep. I'm just going to keep doing it. He can't stop it. So, and then I'm going to start all over. I know he's not going to be able to, he's not going to shake the lockdown. The lockdown's too strong. He was never close to ever getting his leg out. I was so confident at this point. I was getting a little gassed and um, I knew I could recover. All I needed was like a little time. So uh, I'm, I'm to, to uh, hide uh, the the gassiness or the gassiness. Uh, <laughs> the fact I, I would tired. stop breathing. I'm dying inside, but I would stop breathing. You know, like when Jason walks into your house and you're in the closet and you're you're like, <laughs> but then right. you go. <clears throat> Yeah, I was doing that just so he wouldn't smell. Now I did it again. I knew I could do it again. Now I got to get his leg to the other side. I don't want, look at it. See, I'm holding onto his leg. I need to get it to the other side of my body. Right, so I'm like, you know what? Damn, I lost it again. Let me let me do it again. So look at that. I gotta let me do it again. They thought he reversed me, but I go, I'm just setting it up. Now I got the leg over right there. Boom. Oh, now that's beautiful. where I want to be. That's the transition right there. And I go, Ooh, I'm gonna go after his leg. I thought about it for a second there, but I go, no. You know what? I'm gonna roll. I I can't just reach back for it. I gotta have set it up. I'm gonna set it up right here. Squash him down. I thought about it again, but then he stopped it right there. And uh, I go, okay, let me set it up differently. But then we got broke up here. And now, this is where all the controversy Now, happened. what the hell was going on here? I knew what position we were in. It was top stoner control. 
Right. I knew the position. I'm there all the time. He had no idea what I was doing. So, and he didn't know that I knew. He thought it was just some crazy, weird position. And uh, he didn't know where he was. And uh, I was, I was, see, I pulled guard right here and I was going to say, here, give me your leg. Let me throw it over. I'm going to get on top and we're going to go back and I'll show you exactly the whole thing. I was going to show it. I was going to do it from the top. See, I'm trying to do it <laughs> um, from step one. And then I was going to take him over and I was showing him the sweep <laughs> instead of just getting in the position. He's all confused. He don't know what's going on. I'm trying to, I go, you got to get your leg over. And he's not. He keeps refusing. I'm like, man, he's not letting me get in the position. And look, he's like, no, no, no. And he didn't know. Uh, in his defense, he didn't know the position, but I know exactly what's going on. He refuses to get in the position. And then I'm just thinking, I need to rest a little bit anyways. So this is bullshit. I'm not going to argue. Look, we're just arguing here. He won't let me. I know exactly. And I, then I thought, decided, I, fuck that. Fuck this shit. I'm not going to get fucked here. And the crowd was going nuts. They're yelling, replay, 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 replay. And so Scott Nelson looks over right here. He looks over to Halleck and he goes, what do you want me to do, Halleck? Halleck said, stand him up. Start standing. And when, look, he's going to walk over right now. And I said, what did he say? And then they put the replay on. He goes, Halleck said, stand him up. He said, stand him up. And I'm like, fuck that. We're not standing up. And then the replay comes on and everybody looks at the replay. And then Hoyler just gets down and gets into position. I go, look, look what the, I know what position's going on. So he let me have it. See, he said, okay, no, no resistance. Once the video came out. Yeah. You have trying to sneak that left knee in. Yeah. Yeah. And this is top stoner control right there. Right. There's stoner control from the back. And there's but he didn't have your wrists. Top. He didn't have your wrists before. Well, it didn't break. matter. It didn't matter. None of this. What, what I want here is I want him to push me away because I'm going to dip and roll. I'm going to tuck and roll. But if he holds on to me, I can't tuck and roll if he holds on. So I got to make it look like I want to smash him and squeeze him because I could pass at any time. The pass is guaranteed. Do you want the for sure pass or do you want to try to tuck and roll and go for the kill right away and go after the vaporizer? And I thought, I'm going right for the vaporizer. Fuck passing this guard and then he recovers half guard and all that shit. I wanted to go for the kill right here. So right now I'm on my side. I'm setting it up. I need to be up on my knees, but just all I do is need to get up. See, I'm getting up. All I got to do is really get on top, but I know I could get on top of him anytime I want. I know this position i'm just waiting now i'm on my knees i collected some gas i recovered I, he can't get out i'm in control here his legs are all mangled so what i want to do is turn to my right and roll on my left shoulder but i what I, i'm resting all i'm doing is resting i'm going to turn to my right roll on my left shoulder but i need him to push me so i see i'm i'm selling the fact that i want to squeeze him and i want to see, see and now he's pushing away he bought it he bought the fact that I wanted to squeeze him. <laughs> so this is what I always do. So now I'm gurgling, going, ah, ah, ah. like, I hate this. Like, I hate this. But look, he's going to help me. See how he helped me and he pushed me through? He pushed me through. Like, he pushed you through. And now you got this. And I thought yeah. for sure he was going to tap. This is the vaporizer. No one has ever not tapped to this. This is, in my arsenal, the nastiest leg lock. This is a, it's a calf crank and it's a toe hold at the same time. And he can't protect himself with his other leg. His other leg is, we're on his other leg. So his other leg is useless. I can use both my arms as opposed to the calf crank from the truck. The calf crank from the truck, you can't use both arms for fear of getting arm barred with one of them. The left, yeah. Yeah. And so you need to protect that other leg anyways. He's got a free leg to break shit up part but in from the vaporizer he can't protect with his other leg it's out of the mix and you could use both arms because there's no arm bar and it's a it's a it's a leg compression and a toe hold in one it's the nastiest leg lock in my arsenal and the fact that dude, his leg popped at least seven times it was popping and crack and i'm telling him right here i'm saying i'm asking him i go dude we can end this and he's like no see that he's like no i go yeah. we can stop this it keeps popping he goes that's normal that's normal i go it, it keeps popping and uh, he refused to tap. He wow. refused, man. And I was yanking, so I thought, I'm gonna. I was doing things I never did to that vaporizer. I usually just grab the toes with both hands, twist it, and pull. And it's really easy. And the calf crank from the truck, another thing that you need, you need to stomp your left, the inside of your left foot with your right foot. You got to shove your leg deeper into that the position. back of his knee. Look how nasty that yeah. looks. But in the calf crank, you need to stomp. In this one, you don't need to stomp. You could just keep your legs figure forward. 
both arms, that's enough pressure. Just leave your legs figure four. But if for some crazy reason they don't tap like he did, then you would go to the stomp to add even more pressure. But he was holding the gi pant. So I could see he's, he's holding my right leg. I need to use my right foot and stomp on the inside of my left foot. I need to pull it up and stomp on it. And he that, can't get his hands free. I can't get my leg free. You see how he's holding it? Right. <laughs> but I mean, his, so I decided, you know what? I'm just, I generally don't need to stomp on that foot. So I must still try to make him tap like everyone else taps without it. But see how he's holding it? So I grab his foot, I'm twisting it. And I thought there's like a, a minute left. I go, I'm going to give it everything I got one more time. And I just grabbed his foot, something I never do. And I twisted it and shoved it, like try to shove it like in his ribs, man. And he still wouldn't tap and you're just popping. And it's just, he didn't care. He just kept going. He knew that if he didn't tap, it would be a draw, and that's what he needed. He couldn't have you tap twice. He yeah. tap him twice. Yeah. He has nothing. The fact that he's holding onto my gi pants there, that's what's saving him. You know, that's he, so crazy. Yeah, he's in some <clears throat> serious danger right here. If you had to do it again, would you do it with gi pants again? Yes. Yes, because the gi pant made those electric chairs so easy. He could. He was never close to pulling his leg out of the lockdown. So, uh, the traction yeah, is just yeah. unbelievable. I mean, the, the pants. The pants were bad for him <laughs> in a lot of ways, but it saved him right here. In this one position. Yeah, it did save him. <sighs> but I would. Yeah, I would. Uh, uh, I would have went back to pants anyways with that whole pant scandal thing. Um, uh, I asked. I asked time. to wear pants. They said, okay, you can wear pants if you promise not to change your mind. I wanted to change my mind. They said, you promise not to change it. I <laughs> and then so they made me wear what I asked for. So um, I met his lawyer. His lawyer, it ended up being really, really cool, man. The guy that was uh, trying to protect Hoyler from uh, the pant oh, whole situation. That. That's when you're twisting it? Dude, yeah, I'm pushing down and trying to smash. He's obviously twist. in some serious pain here, but it's incredible that he's not tapping. What do you think happened to the knee? If you had a guess, is there some damage? No, maybe, maybe he, his knee always pops. And well, that's, that's the thing normal. they say about him is that he won't tap to joint locks. Like, remember when uh, Sakuraba got him in that Kimura? Yeah. And uh, they stopped the fight, and he's like, don't stop the fight. I, I, I'm there all day. I'm fine.